Hi, my name is Lindsay Coyle. I work in the New York City office for Special Olympics New York, and today I'm going to walk you through how to join a Ring Central meeting from your computer. We have a separate video for how to join a meeting from your phone or from your tablet. Be sure to check out the video description for a link to that video. A Ring Central meeting might be specific to your training club, or maybe it's one of our weekly live virtual workouts, but regardless of what the meeting is for, the process should be the same. At no point in that process will you have to sign in or create a, an account with Ring Central meetings. I'm going to walk you through the process as clearly as I can, but if you're still having trouble, be sure to reach out to the most appropriate person in your region. Some contact information will be posted at the end of this video. Hopefully this process is, is helpful for you, so let's go ahead and get started. Before you can join any meeting, you're going to need to gather some important information. Most of this information you should be able to gather from the person who sent you the meeting invitation. I'm going to go ahead and open up a test video now so I can show you how to find that information. Every meeting is going to have a meeting ID. Some invitations will have it clearly identified like this one here, but if not, you can always look for it in the link. It should be a nine to 10 digit number. Depending on the security settings for the call, some meetings will also have a password. I definitely encourage you to write this information down so you don't have to keep coming back to this invitation. So that meeting ID, 148747392. Password is Sony. As we said before, these Ring Central meetings can be for a variety of things. Most meetings are going to have a different meeting ID, so be sure to check that meeting ID every time you're going to join a call so that you're getting into the right one. All right, now that we have the meeting invitation information, we can go ahead and close out of this. And we're going to open up the web browser. I'm using Google Chrome, but it shouldn't matter what browser you use, whatever you feel the most comfortable with. Once you're into your web browser, you're going to go to Meetings. Dot ringcentral.com. No need to put HTTP or any of that, just meetings.ringcentral.com. This first page that pops up is going to be where you can put in that meeting ID. So we go back to what we wrote down 148747 As you can see, we don't quite need that password yet. In just a second, when I click join, it's going to prompt me to download the Ring Central Meetings app. You don't have to download the app. There is a way that you can bypass that and access it from your browser, but that gives you some limited functionality and it does make it easier to have the app, especially if you plan to join meetings again and again. So this is loading. Um, again, this process may take a little bit longer depending on, on your computer. We're gonna click download and run Ring Central meeting, sometimes there will be a pop-up box. Um, if that does pop up, you're just going to click open. For whatever reason, it's not popping up for me. Like I said before, you don't have to do, do the download process. You can always click join from your browser. We want to download the app though, so I'm going to click here, download and run Ring Central. Should have a box pop up down here. On some browsers, maybe it'll be a pop-up. You're just going to click and open. If a box pops up, you, you also wanna click open on that pop-up box. This process can take a couple of minutes. So if you're joining a meeting for the very first time, go ahead and give yourself five to 10 minutes to make sure you can still join on time. All right, so as soon as the app downloads, it asks you to enter the meeting password. Again, not all meetings are gonna have a password. So you may not need to have that step. Click join. Password. All right, this is a waiting room. Some meetings will have them, others won't, again, depending on the security settings for the call. I'm actually the meeting host on my other device for this meeting, so I'm going to go ahead and let us in, and then I can give you a glimpse as to what the meeting will look like once you're inside. This is what it's going to look like if you're in a meeting. Sometimes your video will automatically pop up, but if it doesn't, you want to join your video here. And now you popped up on camera. You can mute and unmute yourself by clicking here. These are things that you can do if something's going on in the background. You can mute and unmute yourself, um, depending on if you're talking or not. 
If you're not talking, you'll definitely want to mute yourself so that to eliminate any background noise for the rest of the, the people. You can see this notification pops up here. You're muted. That's because the computer can, can tell that I'm talking, but I'm on mute. Even if that notification can't, doesn't pop up, you can still see that right here with a little microphone with the X marked off. This bottom line is going to be where you're finding all the important information that you'll need to use if you're in a meeting. Not all, not all meetings will have all of these functions. Most of the meetings that you guys are in probably won't have a share button, and they may or may not have a chat. They do have a chat. That's where you can send uh, messages to anybody else that's in the, the chat or in the meeting. This one only has two people in it, so I can't see all the options, but normally you'd be able to send a, a chat message to the host, any individual in the meeting, um, or the whole group. Another important function while we have this participant list up is you can change your name. So right now I've got this full name in here, but maybe I just want to be Lindsay or maybe Lindsay Coyle or maybe my roommate's on. So he's actually going to put his name in. Really depends on what's going on. You want to probably uncheck this box if you're using a shared computer. So maybe you're a parent or a coach getting on with an athlete um, or you've got siblings, whatever it is. Um, just check and uncheck that box, depending on what's going on. I'm usually the only one who uses my computer, so I'll keep that check. Again, if you can't find it, you just hit that participant button and it should pop up. You can click rename. So participants, find yourself, and then click rename. The other important feature you'll want to do is you can change your speaker view up here. If there's a lot of people on the call, you'll probably want to put gallery view. That way you can see everybody. That'll be really cool for for team meetings or live webinars. So you can see more than just the person who's presenting and you can see everybody who's a part of that call. Can't really get the full gist of it here because it's just me and the host, which is also myself. Uh, but imagine it kind of as a, as a Brady Bunch situation. If you want to just see the host, you can go back to that speaker view. Again, just changing that information up here. If you need to leave or it's the end of the call, you can click down here for leave meeting. Once you leave a meeting, you can go back in just with that join a meeting. Again, once you've downloaded this app, you don't need to download it again. You just need to open it up, whether it's from a, you know, a shortcut on your desktop or from your programs. Just looking for ring central meetings. Once that app is open, just go back to the beginning of the process where you're typing in that meeting ID. You may have to go back into the, the waiting room, but then you'll be back into the meeting, not a problem. All right, well, hopefully that gets you all set up and ready to go for your first Ring Central meeting. But if you're still having trouble, again, there's going to be contact information at the end of this video, so be sure to reach out for more help. All right, hope that worked out for you. Have a good day, and we hope to see you soon. Bye.